I'm Neil. Welcome to Dreaming of Chess Mastery, my YouTube channel that examines the world of adult chess improvements. For some time now, I've been studying free courses on Chessable. If you're not familiar with Chessable, it is a fantastic platform which uh, offers a whole host of services, but the main uh, core business is trainable courses. They have a move trainer. Um, so you might buy a book uh, that, you, that you've had in print form, and this will allow you to study the book um, on your computer, and built into it is a process of spaced repetition. So it really does look to uh, apply innovative, modern, uh, machine-based learning strategies to, to chess study. Um, and it's free to join. I'd heartily recommend it. If you aren't a member of Chessable, uh, well, get out there and sign up because it's fantastic. And the free material is wonderful. And there's a, there's a lot of it. Um, and I've used it for uh, tactical training. I've also used it, they have what are called, um, now I've forgotten what they're called. They're sort of short introdu introductory versions of uh, opening books. Um, and it allows you to maybe look at 20 key variations of a particular opening. And it's, it's a great way of learning something and actually deciding if you want to invest in the full course. But I have had the sneaking suspicion that I'm, I'm kind of going through the motions. I, I, I say I'm building a habit of uh, using Chessable, but how much good is it really doing me? And perhaps what I need to do is a deeper dive, uh, a greater level of commitment. So this month I took advantage of their Easter sale um, and I bought uh, Johan Helstin's uh, Mastering Chess Endgames, which is his, his series of three on opening endgames and middle, middle game strategy. They are fantastic, highly, highly recommended books. And I decided to begin on, on Chessable with the end game. Uh, what does it entail? Well, in excess of 1,000 trainable variations. Uh, so it's going to take me some months to work through all of this. Uh, in the first week of May, I have got on to about variation 20. So I haven't really set in with a, a, um, a deep study habit or as much time dedicating as much time per session as perhaps I'm, I'd like to. But I've made a, made a start. And, you know, it is... I really do like the way he explains things. It's clear to the point... And um, the spaced repetition, well, it's just, it's just the ticket for, I think, the adult chess improve. Uh, in a lot of other areas, if one imagines, I suppose, comparing learning to play chess to, to learning to play a musical instrument um, you know you're sort of building blocks in in the world of music uh, uh, scales and chords and and how you put all of this together uh, and, and of course mangling things a little bit and, and grotesquely oversimplifying um, but of course there's, there's equivalent things in chess uh, and in the end game Right at the very beginning, he looks at uh, uh, the, the variations that I've studied so far are the start of looking at the king in the endgame, and obviously 
key ideas like the opposition and, and gaining the opposition where the two kings oppose each other either with a square in between, uh, more squares in between, or on a diagonal. And it's a, a, a critical principle in winning king and pawn endgames. He really does get to the point, and then the fact that you um, can play through, he shows you a variation, you can immediately uh, test yourself, or you do immediately test yourself. That, and then over the days that follow, you repeat the variations whilst learning new ones, and the idea is to, is to commit certain ideas um, to memory, to, to muscle memory, uh, so that in a game you move with your hand rather than your brain, or, or the moves simply play themselves. Now you might not get the identical position, but uh, the sort of structures repeat. Um, so I think this is going to be uh, a um, well, a foundational building block for really significant improvement. Why the end game? And why not begin with the middle game? Now, there's two reasons for that. The first is I actually have his middle game book, the, the, it's a Brazilian copy. So, my long term plan is to do the end game course, then do the middle game course using a book and sort of compare the two experiences. Uh, I, I think it'll be quite illuminating. But there's a, a, you know, a greater reason why perhaps one should start with the end game, uh, with, with deep study. Um, a simple analogy, and I, and I thought of it recently because we've just finished the World Snooker Championships. Ronnie O'Sullivan collecting his seventh title to tie Stephen Hendry as, as the, uh, um, the most wins in the World Championship. Uh, and I remember in one of my chess books, they used the analogy of snooker. And it's, a, it's a really, really good one. Um, not, applies equally to pool. Um, and the, this advice came from an ex-world champion. He said, you know, when people begin playing snooker, the first thing they do is they rack up all the balls and they want to play a game. And his point was, well, how can you hope to control a situation with such complexity on the table? And the recommended trading strategy was to learn how to pot a ball with no obstructions. And when you've learned how to pot a ball, um, sort of a, a, a red into a corner pocket, um, place the red sort of at the front of the uh, triangle of reds and uh, place the black in its position. Look at those two balls, try and pot the red, getting position on the black to pot the black. And once you've learnt how to uh, pot a two ball combination, you work up, up from there, trying two balls in, in different scenarios, and you develop skills. That's not to say that you don't play a game of snooker while you're doing this. Um, you know, the temptation will be too great. You want to have some fun. But those skills that you're developing in that very restricted setting um, will be the skills that you're going to use when you're playing the games that you play. Uh, and the same applies in chess with the end game. If you learn to coordinate one or two pieces uh, apply certain principles in in uh, 
this kind of pure setting, well, those will cross over into every phase of the game. Obviously, there are provisors. For example, his very first, uh, Helston's first chapter on king and pawn endgames looks at using your king actively. Now, that's not something that you want to do at the beginning of the game. You want to think of king safety. Um, so, obviously, you need to complement, as, as a beginner chess player, um, you need to look at, gain some kind of uh, basic knowledge of all three phases of the game while you're playing. Uh, and understand how king safety is of paramount importance in the opening and early middle game. And as you move closer and closer to the end game, the king becomes a powerful active piece in its own right. Because the possibilities or, or the, the dangers that it faces are reduced, they're not absent, but they're reduced because there are less piece threatening pieces on the board. Principally, the queen might no longer be uh, present as an as a, um, evil adversary. So obviously you've got to get the big picture. You've got to learn each of the three elements. But for most of us adult chess improvers, um, if you're in a position like me, you learned to play chess decades ago. And you do have some grasp of these basic principles. So for us, the end game is a very, very good place to begin. Um, uh, besides... Uh, learning um, how to play end games in themselves, it's an excellent way of learning calculation uh, skills. Actually, in, in, in another of the um, Scandinavian stable of fantastic chess coaches, um, uh, Jakob Argaard, 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 I can never pronounce his name, it's a tricky Scandinavian double A's. Um, in his book, Excelling at Chess Calculation, a large portion of the exercises are endgame studies. Because these are areas where uh, it is all about calculation. And king and pawn endgames are the perfect place to begin. Because um, there's the possibility of, uh, with this reduced material of calculating out until the end. Now, I'm just at the beginning of this particular journey. All sorts of things, other things are going on in chess. A lot of chess coaches say that you should uh, uh, follow that advice and um, uh, hunt one rabbit. If you, you know, try and catch two at the same time, you tend to go home empty-handed. Um, but the hunting one rabbit is my study focus. So if I can f carve out an hour, which is just pure chess study, it will be end games. That's not to say that there aren't other hours in the day where I will do other chess activities. But um, for now, my chess study is going to be dedicated towards the end game. And I'll let you know how it goes. But just before I sign off, if you haven't signed up for Chessable, do yourself a favour, pop over to Chessable and uh, sign up. It will only take a moment and uh, you won't regret it. I'll provide links in the description below. As always, I trust you're enjoying your chess and until next week, from sunny Brazil, ciao.